Hello. <laughs> Thank you for staying. Oh, thank, thank you, you for coming. Oh, me? Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Korea? All gone home. <laughs> Korea monk gone home, huh? Okay. Korea no monk, less busy. <laughs> Where are the Korean? Korean still here? Oh, are you behind there now? You have no work? <laughs> How come the monks has to go and the lay people will stay? <laughs> no, <laughs> normally the monks have less work, right? Yeah, I mean, of course, taking care of temples and all that. Yeah, but sometimes they have to do some ceremony, right? Like for the dead people, the live people, and whoever. In India, yeah, when the masters speak, they pile up many beds, very high, so that everybody can see, yes. But here, I don't know how high can we pile up because, <laughs> because of the roof, yeah. Uh, mostly the master don't have retreat or anything, maybe some festival, and everybody go there, singing, dancing, or eat something, right? Tell me, Indian, what do they do? For example, in Radha Swami? So they just uh, go there, master give the lecture. Yes. And people, after that, they just leave and uh -huh. they can go into their places like we have here uh -huh. and they can meditate on their own. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, but not so many people, not all of them, no? Not like thousands of them meditate together, no? They do? In uh, master, yes, they do. They do? Yeah. Oh, for how long? One week? Not like they, they do, they just do in their own time. But oh, they stay that there. time, maybe yeah. one day? Yes. That day? Yeah. Uh, like Master birthday or something? That's right. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah. I, I didn't see that. I yeah. always saw the Master speak maybe every Sunday or something. Yeah, some people yes, come master. in and then leave. Yeah. I don't know if they eat or not. <laughs> Yeah, but I saw in a big ashram, they cook food for everyone. Yeah, yes, this one, yes. they cook food too, Master. Yeah. Yeah, yes. they give food to everybody. And then somebody come out singing first, and then the Master speak, and they sit on a dais very high, and then that's it. You know, maybe Master lecture one hour, two hours, and then everybody goes home. <laughs> yeah, normally Master just 45 minutes. What, what? 45? 45 minutes. Exactly, lecture. 45? Yes, Master. Why 45? Why not, why not 46? <laughs> Babaji said um, people can't concentrate more, oh. more than that. Oh, so I overstay my welcome, huh? Okay, what time is it now? <laughs> Make an alarm clock? Huh? Why? What are you saying? Perfect? Yeah. Five hours, that's a perfect. <laughs> Minus you are talking in between and your question half an hour, so it's four and a half hours. No, more, because it was more than five hours, five and a half hours, so it's five hours, more or less, okay, huh? I didn't know how I do that either. <laughs> yeah, if I talk to a, an ordinary person, maybe 10, 15 minutes, I got tired already. I can't just go on and on like this. <laughs> All right, so spiritually... Uh, spiritual work is different, hey? It might be a blessing, so you can continue, huh? And you have a marathon, you have marathon ears, right? <laughs> marathon uh, attention. Mm. Not attention deficit. Oh, you are incredible. <laughs> Something special about you, huh? You can listen for hours. What? Special. You're the one that's special. I am special? Yes. Yeah, like disciples, like master, right? <laughs> <laughs> we are both special. Huh? Good, good. Then I will continue today, okay? Mm. It month you three. I have to warn you first how long. Ooh. Eight, eight pages long. Poetry kind of verses, yeah? We should really thank the past masters, monks and nuns and scholars who have taken time to record the Buddha's teaching after the masters and Nirvana 
and also for the past and present persons, lay or monks or nuns who have really dedicated themselves, sacrificed their time and precious health or under any difficult situation to translate this so that I can read it to you. And we have to thank them. And may they be blessed forever by all the Buddhas, past, present, and future. May their merit be immense. May they be liberated forever. Thank you. According to Buddhism and the believer and the tradition, when you read sutra and all that, you have to put on incense, flower, you know, and bow to the sutra first and thank all the Buddhas and Bodhisattva in ten directions, all respectfully, before you read it, okay? And then you cover the sutra also with silk, or, you know, beautiful cloth, and I just make it more popular. Yeah, more easy, simple. And I apologize to all the Buddha. I say, if I done something wrong, according to the tradition, my heart is full of respect. It's just that I cannot always do that. So please, all the sin, whatever I've done wrong, is all on me. At least other people, they hear the names of the Buddha, according to the sutra, they will get benefit. Yes. So now, because yesterday, remember, the Buddha said that he wanted to cause Ananda to become enlightened. So he asked Manjushri, contemplate all the 25 ahat, irreversible ahat, uh, non-returnable bodhisattva, that told you 25 methods. Could you explain it to Anand and the assembly in the beings after my extinction, after my nirvana, which expedient door is the best? I mean, most suitable. They're all very good. The Buddha praised them all as very good vehicle for enlightenment because they all became enlightened, became ahat or bodhisattva through their learned methods, even from aeons ago. Give them this strength to continue until this day when Buddha Sekamoni came into the world and then they continue to practice and to be of help in his time. So they are all very good method. Yeah? The Buddha didn't say, oh, this method no good, that method is inferior. No, he praised them. Remember? I read it again. The Buddha said that you should now contemplate these 25 great bodhisattva and ahats, oh, their method as well, who are beyond learning already. I mean, they're liberated. They don't need any worldly explanation in order to resolve to become a saint anymore. They all know everything. They're already finished with their learning. They already attained ahatship or bodhisattva -ship. Each has explained the initial expedient in his accomplishment of the way. Or say, they have cultivated to true and actual perfect penetration. Their cultivation is equal without distinctions of superior and inferior or earlier or later. I mean, oh good, 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 yes. So now because he wants Ananda to be enlightened quicker. <laughs> so. You see, Ananda has been with the Buddha all this time. He has not taught him cunning method. And you came from nowhere. I don't even know where you live, what you do, which daughter and son's house you belong to. You get initiation almost right away, okay? Now, because I'm not running around the world, so they have to purify themselves and study a little bit of the teaching so that they know why. They want to be initiated. So be sure that liberation is what they seek, not any worldly power or magical ability or fame and fortune and stuff. I guess you are luckier than Anand. <laughs> See, only now I wish to cause Ananda to become enlightened. Poor Ananda, serving the Buddha all this time. Hmm? And she hasn't got the main 
method. Okay, the good one. He wasn't enlightened. That's why he, he said, the Buddha said, I want to cause Ananda to become enlightened. Ananda wasn't enlightened at all at that point. And been with Buddha all this time, stay next to him. Memorize so many, many discourses and miracles that happen within the assembly, within the followers of the Buddha. Huh? Imagine that. So intellectual cleverness or sharp faculty of memory uh, mean nothing. But we have to thank the Reverend Ananda for all this. Okay? Yeah. He remembered most of this. Maybe he was jotting down then. Uh, maybe he had learned shorthand because we don't have any machine at that time. So he must have been good. And he remembered that. Either he, he wrote it down while listening or he remember and wrote down later or tell someone else to do it. You see that? So we have to thank him. Always because thirst I have heard mean Anand wrote like that. Mean I have heard Buddha say this, say that. Yes, always the same. That means it's from Ananda. Wow, he is great. That's why they call him memory number one. <laughs> okay, and Manjushri is wisdom number one. He has very great wisdom when he was with the Buddha. Of course, he practiced many kalpas as, as, as a sense of the Ganges River. So, oh, you guys, so good memory, number one. You remember everything. <laughs> you know everything. <laughs> okay, so now the Buddha asked Manjushri, because he is a prince, the Dharma prince, now when you wise or you practice uh, superiorly, then the Buddha would call you like a Dharma prince or the assembly would give you such title. Just like I'm giving the title Supreme Master, yeah? I was told to have that title. Everything fall into the places. Now, after all this year, you can see everything fall into places, right? Why I do this, why I have that name, why I have this name, and uh, why Ching Hai and not anything else. You understand all that? Everything is like a puzzle and fit perfectly now into a big picture. Remember when I went to lecture, somebody asked you, why you call yourself or let your disciple call you Supreme Master? <laughs> I just suddenly, I just feel natural, it's me. So I say, why not? I'm the Supreme Master. <laughs> I didn't mean arrogant or anything. I, I just feel like it's natural like that. It's the way it is, you see? Otherwise, I would have been shy to say, oh, I don't know, people call me like that, never mind. But no, I just feel natural. I didn't feel proud or anything. Just feel like your name is Sonia. I'm from South Africa. That's it, you know. There's nothing to be proud of or nothing to be shy about. It's your name, your position, and your country. Where are you from? That's it. Just the way I respond. Did you feel an ego or anything? No, I don't feel an ego. Normally I would be shy, but I just feel so natural at that time. <laughs> As if God wants me to answer like that. It felt good hearing you say that too, Master. You yeah. know? It's like the way it came across. It just felt really good that God is here. Yeah, you were there? Yes, Master. Oh, I see. You. Good then. So is, is it in Africa? Or was it in Europe? No, I think it was, I think it was in Europe, Europe somewhere. Europe. Yeah. In Europe, okay, okay. And I think the whole assembly also felt that it's a natural thing, you know, not ego or arrogance, right? I did not feel that from them. I did not feel the response energy back to me as if, oh, that's a garbage or self-aggrandizement. No, no. I feel they, they feel that's genuine. <laughs> it was a very good feeling afterwards. <laughs> For myself also, you know. I don't always feel good like that. <laughs> But it felt very good that day. Mm. As also one day I was in Australia and uh, one guy just stood up and preaching. After the question and answer, they, or maybe not during my lecture or something, they just stood up and uh, preaching his own stuff. And then I just say, I invite you to shut up and everybody clap. <laughs> <laughs> you were there too? <laughs> but you saw that? You saw that lecture in Australia, yeah. <laughs> was very polite, you know. <laughs> I'm very gentle to other people because it's not my job.
to carve them into anything useful. Not yet. Maybe later. Maybe when they became disciples. <laughs> yes. If I want to carve a piece of shapeless wood into something beautiful and useful, then we have to work on it. No? Detailly, the carving. <laughs> But don't get carved. It's kind of painful for the ego, okay? <laughs> we don't need so many carved wood statues. <laughs> I'm also tired of coffee, okay? <laughs> now you grow up, all right? You learn something higher and accept it and assimilate it, okay? Good for your energy, good for your being, huh? So, Dharma Prince, Manchu Sri. Receiving the Buddha's compassionate instruction, arose from his seat, bowed at the Buddha's feet, and basing himself on the Buddha's awesome spirit, spoke verses to the Buddha. Oh, I'm sure he's a, he's a Dharma prince. He's really number one wisdom. Look, spontaneously, he composed verses. Of course, it's translated different, but if it is original, it must be very rhyming and easy to remember. You see all that? Truly, immediately, spontaneously, a poem was born out of Manjushri wisdom. Is that wonderful? Yes. All right, I read now. I hope I don't have a long calendar because <laughs> he's the god of wisdom. He's a Bodhisattva wisdom. Maybe he, he's very clear. And... Especially, we have already heard so many explanations, a lot of calendar before already, from Kuan Yin Bodhisattva and my humble self. Maybe, maybe we don't need any more, and then you can rest early. <laughs> Thank you for the chapati and the samosa. Very good. I ate only half of it, half of the samosa, because you make it big, whoa, generous, and I share with the ghost. They like it. They also thank you. Mm. But I eat more later, okay? I just didn't have time. I didn't have time. I just quickly make a few pieces and then so that I can give the rest to the ghost. But I will enjoy later when I'm really hungry, okay? I'm really hungry. <laughs> Mostly I, I cannot... Hope you like it, Master. Thank you. I will, I will. I will. I will like it. Long time no see how not like, okay? Yes. And also the curry you made us... The chickpeas curry, who yes, made? Oh, yes. yeah, I combine it with the samosa. It tastes delicious. Okay, but I didn't have time. I have to sign, correct many paperwork, yeah, before I came down. See, and then I have to correct myself also. <laughs> <laughs> Must be you looking so beautiful. <laughs> and wrapped up, you know, to look decent, yeah. <laughs> so it takes some time, so I don't, I can't afford to always eat. You know, I eat really when I'm hungry. I'm sorry to tell the Buddha that I broke this precept that after noon time you cannot eat, but I have no other time. In the morning when, when I wake up, when I'm out of meditation, you don't feel hungry. And then many works waiting, or dogs, or end dogs, or humans and stuff. And then working, 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 you know, time pressure, I can't just... Sometimes I eat and work at the same time, but sometimes I cannot because there's no work there. I must do some other work. I cannot uh, bring the chapati here and then uh, work and say, Oh, manchu shui, yum, yum. <laughs> and receive him in the Buddha, mm, yum, yum. <laughs> it's different work, you see. In my own quarter, I sign document, I correct a script, for example, then I can eat. Yeah? Nobody see me. <laughs> and if I'm yum yum, nobody hear me, huh? And the paper don't talk back at me, nothing. But here I cannot. It's a different work, so I can't afford to eat then. But I will, okay? I ate already some. They're very good, very good. Thanks for giving me the opportunity to. Oh, of course, I love your opportunity. I love, <laughs> I love to give you that opportunity anytime. <laughs> My pleasure. Yeah, Master, we are here for another week. I'll make something else for you. Another week? Oh, wow, really? Oh, don't tell people. They're envious. <laughs> <laughs> because you can't make it for a thousand, yeah? Wow. Yeah, so maybe just for me and some... I'll share with the staff yeah, later. If a lot, i share with them. Yesterday, I came back home, and they gave me some noodle and some sinky tofu soup. I couldn't eat a lot. 
supposed to be very hungry, and, you know, but didn't feel so hungry. Yeah. And then so I eat some and I gave to, to the staff also. It depends on how much, yeah. Some of the, you know, late working staff, yeah, not all of them. Some of them already rest or meditate. All right, we. Now, thanks, Manchu Sri Bodhisattva, for concentrating all these 25 methods in a s short poems for us. It's not short, but it's short compared to all the calendars that we had before. <laughs> <laughs> he spoke thus in verses to the Buddha. The sea of enlightenment in nature is perfect and clear, as you saw it. Yeah? When you meditate, sometimes you see nothing else but brightness and perfection. Yeah, you feel also. Complete, distinct body is a miraculous source. The same. Miraculous source of body or enlightenment nature is the same. Same thing, explained, expressed in different words. But when basic brightness shone, so that objects appeared, with objects' existence, the nature brilliance ceased. Okay, so now this is quantum physics. <laughs> Naturally, there is just brightness, yeah? That's a Buddha nature or enlightenment nature. And then it's all bright and clear. Normally it's tranquility, tranquil brightness, only light. When it's expanded itself, when it's shy, it's showing off, yeah? Then things came into existence. That's what he meant. But then... When all the, the shyness became the existence, then the brightness ceased, the brilliance ceased. Meaning, once the brightness enters into some form, then you don't see that brilliance outside anymore. I mean, the reality of brightness anymore. Therefore, you see, you have light inside you. It's proved when you meditate, you see it. Oh, maybe not uh, <laughs> sometimes, yeah, but okay, it's proven, yeah. So inside you, you have light. Otherwise, where, where do you find it? Huh? It's not from the light, you close your eyes. It's not from the ear, you don't listen to f by your ears. So when you meditate, you see the brightness inside. That is a proof that you are originally from this brightness. You are part of or is uh, integrated. You and the brightness are the same. Therefore, sometimes you meditate well, to some of you, you see just brightness, bright light, nothing else. Nobody, no, no you, no me, no world, the whole assembly here also can disappear into brightness. Yeah, all right. So uh, Manjushri already realized this truth. So he told like that. Say so he's talked to the Buddha, but because Buddha asked, but doesn't mean Buddha doesn't know. Buddha is tired, he take a rest, I think. <laughs> Let everybody talk, talk. And then the Manjushri say that. So now, because of that, suddenly there's no brightness anywhere, and it caused confusion. You see, so he said, confusion and falseness bring about emptiness. Relying on emptiness, time and space take form. This is quantum, Big Bang. When the real energy exploded, then there's a chaos all over, chaotic uh, rearrangement or readjustment or adjusting and all that. And falseness, because there's no brilliance shining anymore around. And then bring about emptiness. It could be like a darkness also, in the confusion and falseness. If you're not a Buddha anymore, if you're not in the Buddha's state of mind, if all beings has become confused, huh? therefore there's emptiness that arises from that confusion and a wrong concept. And relying on emptiness, Time and space take form. See, originally there's no time, no space. So just like when you meditate or when you're happy, time passes so quick. So it's not actually this time at all. Time is just relative terms, but we're so used to it. So we work eight hours, <laughs> we sleep seven, eight hours, 
And we eat about one hour, everything we count, like, oh, an hour time in this. And then because of the emptiness, time and space are born. Thought settles. The thought of being settles. Making countries and land. What knows and feels becomes living beings. After the movement of the energy, whatever can discriminate becomes thought. And after the thought are born, it settle, yeah, it settle here and there, and manifest into countries and lands. So all things born from thoughts is not an ordinary thought. It's probably thoughts from one of the creative source. Okay, from a, one of the creative energy. It's saying thoughts. But it could be like just movement of energy, understand the collision of energy, the resettlement of position in the universe after the, the shining forth of the original brightness or brilliance, okay? I mean, after the explosion. Mm, the scientists call it Big Bang then, huh? All right. And after that, whatever energy that still can move and can interact with each other, become like a thought. Just like energy, it can move things. So we can call that, it's a thought or thinking. Because thought here is not like we're thinking in our mind now, but it's something higher, yeah? From the energy interaction with each other. Are born uh, mountains and countries and lands. What knows and feels become living beings. Whatever has not become countries or lands or mountain which has feeling, which has some recognition of some kind, become living beings. Like, okay, the big explosion. And then here, one piece become a country, another energy settle into mountains, other energy settle into lands, flat lands. And some other energy settle into some some kind of yes first yes just whoever whatever settle that energy settle into some form of movement which knows and which feels because sentient beings you see that's why sentient beings we are one of those sentient beings that is born from this energy brilliance energy that settle in different places yeah when it's settled into this form we become ascension beings the one that can know and feel becomes sentient being the one that cannot recognize meaning like the mountain okay it might know something yeah but different not the knowing of the physical existence the mountain may know some other thing that we don't know Okay, but they don't know the taste of the bread that you eat. They don't feel the emotion of romantic love that you do. Okay, uh, whoever can know many things from the physical existence and can feel from the interaction with others around, other living, moving beings, these are living beings. If you know, can know, you can feel, then you are counted as sentient or living being. All right. The emptiness created within great enlightenment is like a single bubble in all the sea. Lands like fine dust motes subject to outflows all come forth out of empty space. Within this emptiness, after all the confusion and chaos, after the explosion, then confusion, and then arise the emptiness. The emptiness is still within the great original enlightenment, you know, the original uh, brilliance, okay? Even though it is, have a lot of being in it and different shape and form, but we are still within the enlightenment original, the brightness or the light anyway. But the emptiness is also created out of enlightenment also. And then the emptiness creates more things. <laughs> the enlightenment, brightness, the original body nature creates the emptiness yeah? after the chaos. And then the emptiness creates other things. The emptiness is just like a bubble 
a single bubble in all the sea. But then the lands that create it are like fine dust motes subject to our flows and all come forth out of empty space. It just come from nowhere. Lands and sea originally is like dust, yeah? Even lands are not really settled yet. You know, they are still a very maybe soft and hollows and spongy type, like dust, not set. Actually, the scientists <laughs> describe them as gas, you know? Those uh, not yet solidify themselves into a satellite, into uh, Earth, planet, is just like gas, they say that. It truly is like that. And here he describes it like fine dust motes, like dust. Probably not yet completely solid. If he defined the beginning of the world, he tell us how the world is formed. And they all come out of empty space after this explosion of the divine light. Just as the bubble burst, space is no longer there. How much the less the three states of being. He says, suppose this uh, emptiness within all the sea, the single bubble in the sea, if it bust, then there's no space. You see, we are created within this emptiness, yeah? But the emptiness is described here just as a bubble in the sea. When the bubble busts forth, then there's not, no space anymore. If we have a balloon, yeah? Then inside we have space, empty space. But if the balloon gone, disappear, there's no space. But we are illusionary living in this kind of bubble. And we have space, we have time. <laughs> But if the bubble bust, then we cannot find any space anymore. How would we even count time? That's what he meant, okay? Even less the three states of being, meaning the physical, the astral, and the causal. Mm, the thinking ability, the creative ability of the astral level, and the physical level as a human. All right, so when the bubble bust, when the emptiness no longer there, then we don't have anything. All beings gone also. Returning to the source, the nature is not two. Many are the entrances through experience. None of them does the sagely nature fail to go through. Compliant or adverse, all is expedient. First resolve and enter in samadhi. Come slow or fast as there are different norms. He means if you want to return to your original self, the source. The nature is not two. I guess whether we or the source, they are the same. It's just we make it different. Okay, so the nature are not two. We or the source are the same. We or the enlightenment Buddha nature are the same. Just we confine in this or we false thinking. Mm. Many are entrances through experience, meaning you can go back to nature, back to your source through many different doors, meaning many 84,000 method, I guess that. So, none of them does the sagely nature fail to go through. Meaning any of them, through any door, any sagely nature can uh, penetrate. No big deal, no problem. Mm? Not any of the expedient door they can go through. Mean you can use any of them in order to go back to your original self. Compliant or adverse or expedient, I mean it's just convenient, just convenient method to go back to yourself. First you resolve and enter in summary, come slow or fast as there are different norms. First of all, you must determine, okay, to follow the way and then you must do all you can to enter samadhi. And then you can uh, either slow or fast, depends on your own uh, resolve and also depends on different kind of method and yourself also. Form and thought combined become the dust. Their essence is not discernible. How can one use what lacks clarity and expect to gain perfect penetration? We came from dust, <laughs> from nothing, so is a form and thought, even combined, is a dust anyway. So the essence is not discernible. 
you cannot even find the essence of your own form, the real form and the real thought. Where from? Where they are? What are they? You cannot see it. You cannot touch. You cannot grasp it. Yeah, you cannot explain it. You cannot uh, analyze it. So how can... What he means is anything you rely on form or mental power, thought, there's nothing there for you to rely on. So he say, how can one use those which lack clarity and expect to gain perfect penetration? Because there are many of the Bodhisattva beforehand, they say they use the touch, or <laughs> the water or whatever. So he say, any form, anything has form or mental quality is dust, is nothing. You cannot rely on them. They're not reliable for you to have a perfect concentration. If you cannot concentrate well, then you cannot enter somebody. That's what he meant. My calendar says so. He explained all that. He explained from the beginning of our worldly existence already how we came to materialize. It came only from emptiness, from nothing. And the thought also came from nothing. And the body, the form also came from emptiness. Therefore, he say like that first before he analyze which method is okay, which is not. So he said, now, he beginning to analyze the surrounding sound, not the inner sound, not the inner vibration, but the sounds around us. The talking, because one of the Bodhisattvas said he heard the Buddha say thing, and because of the voice, he contemplated on that, he became enlightened. So he say now, in Sao, language is intermingled. But the meaning in a word, a name, a phrase is such that no single one can include them all. How can this bring perfect penetration? He say that even if you heard a word or even any sound, it cannot include the whole uh, sounds in the universe as well as the whole sound of the world. So one sound only cannot represent all. So you cannot use that to penetrate deeply into the nature of all inclusive brightness. That's what he meant, enlightenment. Okay. And then now he say another one. That's the sound, the, the voice that he attacked already. No, he said no already. He asked a question, but he mean no. You see, how can this bring perfect penetration? He asked so that the assembly know that it's a no-no. Because if they answer, of course not, <laughs> then they know this is a no. He is very polite. Mm. He didn't say, this is not good, <laughs> not like your, <laughs> your very straight master. No, that's no, 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 get <laughs> lost. <laughs> He's very polite. He said, how can this? As if he didn't know, you know. <laughs> he, he give all the facts, and then he said, how can this be? Of course, the assembly, we have to agree. No, that's not. But well, he didn't say anything. <laughs> he didn't criticize nothing. All right, next one. Awareness of smells comes through contact with them. Apart from them, one does not know that they exist. Since sensation of them is not constant, how can one reach perfect penetration? Oh, it's really a poem. See that? Since sensation of them is not constant, how can one reach perfect penetration? All right. Suppose we are born into some place in a bubble and live in a bubble for some reason and never smell perfume. So how can we even know perfume exists? How can we even smell that fragrance? That's what he meant. So rely on smell is a, is a what? No, no. no. Yeah. <laughs> but he didn't say no, no. He said, how can? <laughs> if you don't ever know the smell, you don't even know them exist. So he may know. Right. Next one. He always asks questions. He didn't say no. He didn't say no good. I would say, no good, don't. <laughs> but he say, next one, for the flavor, the one who practiced flavors. And now he say, flavors are not to us fundamental. They only exist when there is something to taste. Since this sensation is not perpetual, 
How can one derive perfect penetration? Ask question again. He means the tasting of things, the flavors are not born from us. It's not our nature. So if we want to go back to our nature, it's logical. We cannot rely on something that is not our nature. He's a very logical guy. No wonder he's number one wisdom monk in the assembly. That's what I guess. My calendar guess like that. <laughs> Otherwise, it's very clear already, no? Just in case you pretend you did not understand, I just pulled a calendar out for you. Now, next one. Touch becomes clear only when something is touched. Without an object, there can be no contact. With fluctuation between contact and separation, how can one gain perfect penetration? He asks again. It's true, right? It's true. <laughs> so somebody practiced to gain enlightenment through touch. Maybe for him. Maybe for him. Okay. Because probably his affinity like that. Or maybe the Buddha blessing, so that even through the touch, he can be enlightenment. These are old time and people are more pure. Anything can get enlightenment for them. But he said, when there's nothing for you to touch, then how can you rely on to meditate on or to concentrate on, contemplate on? Logic, no? So this is a method uh, to rely on touch is a... No, no. Wow. <laughs> you know everything. <laughs> what for I sit here? <laughs> Just to look at you, huh? Your beautiful karma face. No. <laughs> now, mental constructs known as internal dust, reckoned as dust, they are certainly sense objects. Involvement of subject and object cannot be pervasive. How then can they lead to perfect penetration? Similar. You understand already or not? Or do I have to pull out the calendar? Yeah. No. You got? Yeah. Good. So this method, you and whatever object you touch, this is not everything. It's not just you and the one thing. It's not pervasive. It's not your true nature because your nature is all pervasive. That's what he meant. So this one not pervasive enough. How can you go back to your nature? If you touch something that is so non-pervasive. So is this method is a... <laughs> now is the next one. Seeing, okay, seeing. Seeing means seeing a thing around here. Although seeing itself is clear and penetrating, making bright what is before one, it cannot shine behind. <laughs> Ever reaching only half the four direction. Only <laughs> in front. How can it manifest perfect penetration? So you understand already? And some people just concentrate on one object in front, like a crystal, looking at crystal. How can it be all inclusive? So this is a method of seeing things to concentrate in one thing in front of you is a... <laughs> wow, very enlightened indeed. Okay, now on the breath. The nose breath penetrates in and out, but in the rest between there is no air. When you don't breathe in, or between the in and out, there's no air. So these interruptions render it inconsistent. Oh, this guy is very articulate. How can one use it for perfect penetration? So is this a yes or a no, no? No, no, no. no. <laughs> really, no, that is no, no, or you just say because everybody. <laughs> <laughs> we were at the breath, right? Okay, so now it's a tongue. The tongue is not an organ apart from cause. I mean, it's just from cause and effect. Just created out of the condition at that time, after the Big Bang after the explosion of light, of the energy, of brilliant energy, of powerful energy, that sparkle into light. Light is also energy, in different form. So he said the tongue is not an organ apart from cause. 
Flavors form the source of its sensation. When flavors cease, it knows nothing at all. How can it attain perfect penetration? Uh, if the tongue don't taste any flavor, there's nothing there for you to contemplate on. So using the tongue, which rely on the flavors to know enlightenment, like the medicine man, is it yes, yes, or no, no? <laughs> Actually, this is the time for these medicine kings to be enlightened. Their time is ripened. It's not because of their tongue or because of the flavors of the medicine. It's the Buddha right there. They were touching and administrating some ointment or something to him. And at that time, the Buddha just relaxed and then blessed them. Nobody else is sharing the blessing, only two of them. With the Buddha alone. And the Buddha was grateful and comfortable. Don't think the Buddha is not grateful, okay? The Buddha is grateful. All the Buddha, Bodhisattva, they are grateful when they should be grateful. Yeah? So he feels comfortable and of course he feels thankful to his two disciples. So the blessing comes out. Not that the Buddha directs the blessing, it's just automatically. Huh? The rapport between them. Plus, these two medicine men have practiced aeons of kaupas as many as the sands is in the Ganges rivers. God, I thought you don't know that much, but I am wrong. <laughs> I'm very pleased with your catching up and memory. <laughs> now, next one. It is the same for the body as for objects of touch. Neither can be regarded as a perfect awareness with defined and limited invisible divisions. How can it be used for perfect penetration? Somebody is contemplating on the sensation of the body or something before to got to do with the body. So he say the the body and or something that is interact with it is not be regarded as a perfect awareness because it's only limited. Only the body and something touching it, yeah, or feeling, make it feeling, yeah. Like you feel hot or you feel cold with your body, only this limited self and physical sensation. So he say, how can it be perfect penetration to go anywhere, yeah, to go up? So using the body for meditation is a yes, yes, or? <laughs> All right. Now, he talked about the mind's knowledge, mean the knowledge of our worldly learning, yeah? Okay. The mind knowledge is a mass of deliberations. What it perceives is never profound insight, unable to get beyond reflection and thought. How can it reveal perfect penetration? Deliberation. It's just like whatever you know by the mind. Is it just some time of a mental gymnast arguing back and forth, analyzing, just thinking only is a mass of deliberation. You know, whatever you want to take in, you take in, and sometimes people push it in for you. <laughs> a brainwashing. It never can perceive anything that is insight. The insight knowledge is different from the outside knowledge. So he say it can never penetrate the profound insight with T, insight. So the thing the mind collect and call it knowledge is the thing from outside with D. <laughs> so, <laughs> completely different. He say that this perceiving from the mind, it can never get beyond reflection and thought even. The original thought that makes the universe, that makes the world. How can it reveal perfect penetration? So this knowledge my knowledge or the mass of deliberation can be used as a method of enlightenment. Yes or no, no? No! Okay, fine. Next one. The seeing consciousness combines three aspects. Prop is origin. It has no appearance. Since its very substance is variable, how can it bring perfect penetration. If something is too many, it's too complicated, varied, then you cannot concentrate well. 
You cannot bring your mind into one pointedness and single mindedness, right? So he say the seeing conscious is too complicated, too many things. Seeing too many things. You cannot concentrate well on that, on the seeing alone. Yeah. So this method of seeing, using seeing to be enlightened is a yes, yes or no no. no. Okay, good. Now the heart of hearing penetrates the ten direction. The heart of hearing, meaning the source of hearing, the main point, the main source of hearing, penetrates the ten directions. When born, bearing, yeah, born on the strength of great causes, those of initial resolve cannot enter this way. How can one expect to gain perfect penetration or the heart of hearing? He means the physical hearing. If this method of hearing have to be carried by the strength of some good causes, then many of the normal people, a novice, would not be able to enter. Not just hearing, but something special has to happen. The great causes, maybe some blessing from some Buddha. Therefore, normally, the normal people, the lay people, the beginners can never enter, can never use this. You just sit and hear everything all day without any teacher, without any blessing from any saint, any saint, then you get nowhere. So he said that this method is a... Thank you. Wow. We still have a lot. <laughs> a lot of no-no. <laughs> I'm telling you. One, two, three, four, five, six more pages. We're not even half, right? Now another one. Reflecting on the nose. Hmm? The white spot on the nose, as the Buddha had taught one time to one of the who cannot do anything more, it only serves to gather in and settle the mind. Yes, you can calm your mind with that, yes. But once settled, the mind is simply still. Because the mind cannot go any further. You can only calm your mind. But after calming your mind, what? Nothing. <laughs> Just sit there, quiet. Yeah. How can that be perfect penetration, he asks. So it's a yes or it's a no-no? No. <laughs> They're waiting for translation. <laughs> if I ask you, then you can say no-no already. No need translation. It's the same stuff. <laughs> same stuff with every other method. Speaking Dharma through the medium of language is enlightened too by those of former accomplishment. But words and phrases are not free from outflows, from defects. How can this make perfect penetration? Because some of the Bodhisattvas say he listened to Buddha's, some Buddha's Dharma and then he became enlightened. But it's only because he is he already been practicing from Kaupa, Pass as many as the sands in the Ganges River. Yeah, so his time is up, you see? His time is already right. So he just listened to one more sentence. Then he became enlightened. But that is not because of the sentences or the words. Because he said the, the words or phrases are subject to defect, yeah? Therefore, it cannot be a perfect method for concentration. Ah, this guy is very wise. Huh? Hmm. My God, for 25 methods, he cut them all. <laughs> now, yeah, just like you remember uh, the sixth uh, Zen patriarch winner, huh? he heard only one sentence from the Diamond Sutra. Yes. Then he became enlightened. And then he went to sit, seek for initiation and further guidance from a true perfect master. Yeah. Even he already became enlightened by one sentence from the sutra, but he still went to look for a living master. Yeah. He said, where? Where did you get this sentence? He said, from Diamond Sutra. Where can I get the Diamond Sutra? It's in such and such temple. They copy it and recite at home. But that is 
transmitted by an enlightened master, the fifth patriarch. It's not just like from anybody. It's not the sutra alone will make you become enlightened. Huh? Otherwise, all the Buddhists are already became enlightened. They all know Diamond Sutra. They even repeat to me, uh, questioning me <laughs> as if they know better. Yeah, something like that. Knowing, reading, and reciting or learning by heart is useless. Hmm? The only reason that sutra or that sentence was not useless to Hoi Nang, the, the sixth patriarch, because it came from a living master transmission. He talked about it, yeah? And everybody copy. His blessing, his power is within the world, yeah? Just like if I tell you to repeat such and such the holy names or the gifts, etc., it's not because of those words or the mantra or the names that you became enlightened. Yeah. Now, next one. Refraining from transgressions only controls the body. Lacking a body, there is nothing to restrain. Since its source is not all pervasive, how can it bring perfect penetration? One of the monks uh, became enlightened because of keeping the pure precepts, yeah? But only for him, okay? Only for him. He really concentrate on that. It's a kind of concentration, contemplation. And maybe the master who uh, transmit to him these precepts, a pure master, yeah? Powerful. And life after life, he probably always kept the precept pure and complete. That's why this lifetime he also can use that as an expedient means for enlightenment with the live Buddha right in front of him as well. Transmitting again the same precepts. Not because of refraining from transgression. Not because of keeping the precept that you become enlightened. There are other factors involved. Yeah, okay? So he said, you need the body because if you don't have the body, then you don't have to keep the precepts even. You can. What for? Huh? The precept for the monks is that to, ref to control your body so that you don't do this and that harmful things. Yeah? For inconvenience for others and for yourself or harming others. But if you don't have the body, you don't exist. Do you have to keep any, even five precepts? No. I cannot tell uh, nobody here the air. Don't kill. Don't lie. <laughs> don't steal. <laughs> huh? I cannot tell the air like that. Nobody here. What for I tell that? So he said that this is a... Oh, no. no, no. Right. <laughs> Inconvenient. I mean, not proper for anybody, for all the people to practice. Yeah? But for that monk, it was his method to gain the, the initial enlightenment, yeah, or the ahatship. Now, spiritual penetrations are based on past causes. I don't know why they say spiritual penetrations. What connection have they with distinguishing mental constructs? Conditioned thought is not apart from things. How can one attain perfect penetration? I don't remember what is that. But whatever it is, is uh, no. Uh, no, no, yes. <laughs> we have to go back to, you know, the past uh, method, explain clearly. So now, the next one, huh? One may contemplate the nature of earth, but it is firm and solid, not penetrable. What is conditioned is not the sagely nature. How can one use it for perfect penetration? You keep asking. What is conditioned? Yeah, meaning whatever exists uh, because of some conditions to cause it or to manifest it, to materialize it. It's not a true, our true nature. Sagely nature, meaning Buddha nature, mean perfect enlightenment, mean God nature, mean your original self. It's all the same, okay? Sometimes express different words. So if it's not your own self nature, then how can you use it to return to your own self? 
original cell. That's why he said it's a. Yeah, good. Yeah, save me asking. <laughs> I save my breath for continue calendar. <laughs> he also has a big calendar, man. He and Panin Bodhisattva, both of them. I can only be disciple. <laughs> my calendar is not that long. My calendar is not like nine page or ten page like them, right? <laughs> ah, next one. One may contemplate the nature of water, but such a mental reflection is not the true and real. This state of suchness is not an enlightened view. How can it give perfect penetration? Okay, we know. Okay, so is a yes, yes, no, no? Okay, let's pass it. One may contemplate the nature of fire, but admitting dislike is not true renunciation. This expedient cannot be one for beginners. How can one use it for perfect penetration? Yes, yes, no, no? No. So we pass? Yeah, pass, thank you. No need calendar. Yeah. One may contem contemplate the nature of wind, but movement and stillness are not non-dual. Duality cannot bring highest enlightenment. How can one expect perfect penetration? Yes or no, no? No. How can the wind give you enlightenment, right? Next one. One may contemplate the nature of emptiness, but it, its aspect is murky and dull. It lacks awareness. What is unaware is different from body. Uh, how can it bring perfect penetration? So, yes, yes, no, no? No. Oh, right. One may contemplate the nature of consciousness, but one is regarding a consciousness that is not eternal. Consciousness, it just, it's something that we have accumulated from long time and is stored in our alaya faculty. So it's not permanent. Therefore, even the thought of it is empty and false. We don't even have it. So. How can one get perfect penetration? So, yes, yes, no, no? No. Pass the bill? Pass, thank you. <laughs> we look like in Parliament or <laughs> Congress. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and me? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no. Mm. Okay. All activities, if some people concentrate on the activities of the world, he said, all activities are impermanent. That's for sure, right? Yeah. So too, mindfulness has its origin in rising and ceasing. Since cause and effect go beyond cause and effect, how can we use it for perfect penetration? Do you understand already? Yes? Yes or no? No understand? No understand or no, no? <laughs> <laughs> Habit. Habit ready for no, no. <laughs> okay, good that you don't work in Parliament. <laughs> too, too habitually. <laughs> yes, yes or no, no. <laughs> All right, then uh, if you use a mindfulness, you use your mind to be mindful of the activities around you or anything, that's not permanent either. Yeah? So it's a... No. Um, okay, right. Pass, yeah? yeah? I now say this, well, honored one, he finally say this. Buddha, who has revealed the Saha world, I mean our world, in this land, the true substance of teaching resides in hearing the sounds purely. If one wants to attain samadhi, he means the vibration, the inner vibration, because they always translate a sound and we get confused. Just like we also say we meditate on the sound and on the light, and then it could be confused as the outside light and the outer sound, but it is the vibration. Cons Concentrate on the inner vibration is better, or the inner music is better. So he say, I now say this.
to the Buddha who has revealed the Saha world. In this land, the true substance of teaching resides in hearing the sound, the vibration, purely. If one wants to attain samadhi, hearing the inner sound is the best way to enter to enter the inner world, yeah, to enter the path. That's what he meant. Apart from suffering, liberation is found. How excellent is he who contemplates the, the sounds, okay, the sounds. Okay, now, he say, if you contemplate on this sound, you will be apart from suffering. You will be liberated, yes. Through our kalpas, as numerous as Ganges send, he enters Buddha's lands, as many as fine dust motes. Obtaining great power of self-mastery, he bestows fearlessness on living beings. It's like Bodhisattva Kuan Yin, yeah? Okay. Wonderful is the sound of Kuan Shu Yin. A pure sound, like the ocean's roar. You know that. Okay. You know the inside ocean roar, right? He saves the world and brings peace to all within it. He has transcended the world and his attainment is eternal. Wow. He prays him, he prays him. I now make this report, oh, thus come one, regarding what Guan Ying has just explained. It is like someone in a quiet place when drums are rolled throughout the ten directions, hearing at once the sounds from all ten places. This, then, is the actual true perfection. If you hear that inside, as if it's from all over you, okay? Everywhere also. As if you hear actual drum or ocean, right? With you, in front of you. The eyes cannot see through solid forms. Mouth and nose are such the same. He condensed the report now, yeah. So he said the eyes. You see, that's why meditating on the light alone is not enough. You must do the sound. Yeah, I keep telling you that, no? Yes. At home, use a bell or something to remind people to do more sound, okay? Maybe one hour after the light, then bang, then everybody wake up, <laughs> yeah? <laughs> and then <laughs> do some sound. It's good for you, good for everything. And even the energy will come back into you also, not wasting, okay? That you feel not just spiritually endowed, but physically, and form mean that's French. It's friend and form mean you're strong. Uh, yeah, that's friend. It mean you're strong. Je suis en form mean I'm I'm healthy. Yeah. So you cannot say that in English. Uh, physically also uh, strong. Okay, healthy. All right. So he say the eyes cannot see through solid form if you use it. Okay, I mean normally. People use their eyes to see something, you know, and concentrate on the light or something, but even then it's not enough. Not to talk about the inner light is different, yeah, of course. But when you concentrate on something, even using the eyes, you can also see something, maybe, yeah? Mm. The sounds, these sounds, yeah, the inner sound, can be heard even through solid walls. Yeah, of course, you stay inside your little room, or door closed, but you still can hear things. It's not from any music instrument nearby. It's the original universal sound, okay? So he say, one can listen to things both near and far. None of the other five organs can match this. It then is penetration true and real. Yeah, it's you, the ear organs but not <laughs> to hear with the ears. <laughs> this is the thing, yeah? To hear without hearing, yeah. To see without looking, that is the best. But only you understand, yeah? Because you practice it, because you are transmitted this method. Uh, other people, they don't understand. Well, how can you hear without ears? That mean you're deaf or something? <laughs> how can you deaf? 
people here, yeah? How can you see with our eyes? Are you blind? The blind people cannot see, that's what I think. Blind people, some see things. Yes, yes. They see inside world, yeah? They see the roads come to meet them, yeah? They see things come to greet them, yeah? instead of they coming to them. The nature of sounds, meaning vibration, okay? is based in movement and stillness, even, yeah? One hears according to whether there is sound. With no sound, there is said to be no hearing. But this does not mean that the hearing has no nature. You use a hearing nature, not using the hearing instrument of the ears. That's why he say, even you don't hear, you don't have any sound, you still have hearing nature. In the absence of sound, the nature is not gone, yes. nor does it arise in the presence of sound. The hearing nature is always permanent, whether people sounding drums around you or nothing at all, it's still there. That's what he meant, using that for hearing. Yes. Entirely beyond production and extinction, it is then truly everlasting, it's the nature of ourselves ever present, even in a dream thinking. Yes, of course, when you sleep, the sound's still there. You wake up, you hear it. Yeah? Or oh, to many people. To me, it's all the time. All the time. It does not disappear. When conditions and thought are gone and lightened, this contemplation transcends cognition, transcends anything. Yeah. Reaching beyond both the body and the mind. That's for sure, yeah? You don't have to think you want to hear something, yeah? You don't have to use uh, the ear, the organs of the body to hear it. The sound nature is always there. The hearing nature and the sound nature is always there. Now, in the Saha world, our world, the theory of sounds has been proclaimed and understood. I mean, at that time, yeah? The Kwan Yin Bodhisattva proclaim it, and he expounds it further, yeah? So, this word should know already. He means word, but only that assembly know. Or disciple of the Buddha, perhaps, afterward. Even Ananda did not know this. And many other in the assembly did not know this. I don't know what did the Buddha do with all of them. <laughs> <laughs> they all came, shaved the head, put on the kasaya, and then nothing. Huh? Go back in, come back, listen to the Buddha. I guess he wants to cleanse them first by explaining things, by expounding all kind of theory and uh, philosophy until they are bathed enough in his presence, in his blessing. And then they can become pure and then he will impart the Kuan Yin method to them, including Anand. Yes. Living beings are confused about the source of hearing. They think we hear from the ears, yes. They follow sounds and so they turn and flow. Mm. Ananda's power to remember was exceptional. Wow, he praised Ananda. So he just remembered then, he didn't even write down. Maybe he asked somebody to write down later. Yes, well, incredible. If I ask you to remember everything I said today, <laughs> with comma and period. <laughs> huh? You remember? No, no, no? yes, yes. <laughs> don't worry, join the club, I don't remember. I used to have such good memory when I was younger, when I was a child. I remember everything the teacher said immediately. So I never go home and study anything. And my father always asked me, you don't study your lesson? I say, I already knew, by heart. I always win competition when the teacher wrote something on the blackboard and erase it. Let us just look for a few seconds and then erase it and ask who can repeat it. I always won. <laughs> yeah, one time they asked to re recite a long poem. Yeah, I don't remember now, of course. I won also the competition. Yes. Photographic memory? Maybe photographic memory. And I remember many of the classic uh, poetry, you know? They wrote it hundreds of years ago. The whole book of poetry, I remember them. Yeah. When I was young. Yeah. I still remember some now. And not all of them, because I don't 
try to remember them. I just remember them at that time. Yeah. <laughs> and I can recite it. And my father was very proud. First time he showed his pride. He normally he don't say nothing. I bring home a first, first class certificate every month. He never say anything. He never he say, oh, good kid. No. <laughs> he don't say nothing. Only that time there were some guests coming. And then he happened to know that I can recite the book of such and such classic. Then he told me to do it. And everybody was so, ah, oh, then he feel, oh, there's something. <laughs> If I recite to him alone, probably he say nothing. <laughs> A man of very little word. <laughs> Sandwich has become sand. <laughs> All right. You see, if the people... Uh, he meant that the, the sentient beings, the humans in this world, they just follow outside sounds. So they turn and flow, meaning they keep returning in the cycle of migration all the time. Yeah, they turn and flow. Yeah. Uh, Ananda's power to remember was exceptional. Nonetheless, he fell prey to a deviant plot. He was a victim of the Brahma mantra recited by a beautiful. Uh, artisan, okay, he, f he fell. That's why he says, you see, Ananda, with beautiful, uh, exceptional memory capacity, still fell to the, the trap. She sat in that trap, waiting for him for a long time, like a spider web, waiting for him. That day he came back in at her door. Then he fell immediately. He said, was it not because of hitting the sounds that he was nearly lost? His hearing, he following the sound of the mantra. She was reciting, yeah, and drawing him to her. Because his ears were outward. He's hearing the enchanting voice singing this mantra from that woman. If he did not hear it, he wouldn't have following inside into her room. Yeah, okay? So, by turning back the flow, one will make no such mistake. Well, I doubt it, though, with your capacity. <laughs> Looking for new boyfriends so many years. If you don't do enough, Kuan Ying, that's why. That's why I keep telling you, you have to do it. The Kuan Ying is very important for you, yeah? Mm, for your peace also, for your peace of mind, for your peace and family and in the world, okay? Must always do Kuan Yin. From now on, every retreat during meditation, people have to sound the little bell, okay? There is a small Buddhist bell. We can bang, very light, but you can hear it. If not, just go right to the ears of the nodding parliamentary <laughs> <laughs> member. <laughs> Okay, you see that? Huh? He said using the ears, following the ears, uh, perception is no, no, okay? So now he said, Ananda, now he said to Ananda personally, Ananda, you should listen attentively. I rely upon the Buddha's awesome power in describing to you the Vasara king, a samadhi inconceivable of likeness to illusions. It is the true mother of all Buddhas. He said that because the Buddhas bless him, he can explain all this to Ananda. He's very Uh, humble, no? He didn't say, I know all this, now I teach you. He said, rely on Buddha's blessing and power. I can explain this to you. I tell you, this is a king, the Vajra king of method. It's nothing like anything in this illusion world. Yeah, It is a true mother of all Buddhas even. From this Kuan Yin method, all Buddhas were born. All Buddha became Buddha <laughs> because of method, okay? So, you may hear the secret Dharma doors, mean method, of Buddhas as numerous as motes of dust, but without first renouncing desire and outflows, you may amass learning, but you will still make mistakes. He said you can hear many methods, 84,000, for example, as many as motes of dust, 
In many methods, or as many Buddha as dust, you know, that you cannot even count. Most of dust in this world, you cannot even count. Just as much as <laughs> Ganges' uh, sense, yeah, okay. Therefore, but even then, you can amass learning. You may know the theory, you may remember all the Buddha's lecture, but you still fall. You still fail in your effort to become a heart or Bodhisattva or Buddha. Yeah, so you concentrate on learning to uphold the Buddha's Dharma, uh, the Buddha's teaching, Dharma means teaching. Why don't you listen to your own hearing? <laughs> you keep listening to Buddha lecture, why don't you listen to your own? Find your own hearing nature. Mm. Hearing does not spontaneously arise because of sound, it gets its name. But when hearing returns and is free of sound, what does one call that which is set free? He asked Anand. Yeah. As soon as one sense organ returns to the source, the entire six organs are liberated. So using the hearing organs, the true hearing organs, you can liberate all other six organs. For example, the eyes, you know, which always attracted to the scenery or outside beauty in the world. Yeah, the taste attached to good flavor, good food. Yeah? The tongue, for example, mm? the nose like to smell fragrant thing. So all attached to outside illusionary charm and forget the true nature of hearing, of seeing, tasting. That's why I taught you seeing without your eyes. I told you to close your eyes and you're seeing true nature. We see the true things, the true scenery, true uh, teaching, yeah? Hear the true teaching. You have to forsake the ears, but use your hearing the true hearing nature to hear it, then it will cleanse you, it will penetrate your beings with all the truthful substance, then you will return to the truth, yeah? One way or another, one day or another, yeah? That's what it is. Mm. Just use the hearings enough to liberate your beings, because your beings mostly are bounded to these six sense organs, yeah? Oh. You recognize yourself, because you see yourself in the mirror. You're attached to the beautiful girl because you look at her. Or the handsome man, because you see him. Mm. If you don't see it, or you're blind, you wouldn't feel that guy handsome, whether or not he has hair or lost it, or whether he thinks he's handsome or not think he's handsome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sight and hearing are like an illusory covering the triple rim a vision of flowers in space. He say your eyes that you use to see things or your ears that you use to hear things are illusionary. Cover, even cover you to cover. Or like the triple rim or a vision of flowers in space which is not real. Just as the triple rim, the three words are not real. So the sight or the hearing are just as illusionary as that. It's to cover you so you don't see the truth, you don't hear the real thing. Isn't that a pity? Ah, so one monk, I like that very much, I keep repeating him. He said, it would have been better to be blind, deaf and dumb in the beginning. Truly, <laughs> we don't see the real thing with all this stuff. It's just a cover for us to keep us away from our true self. He continued explaining to Ananda, when hearing reverts, return, the cataract is gone. <laughs> Meaning, when you revert your hearing back to the source, I mean, whatever cover your eyes also gone. Your eyes seeing things as is not true, as if a cataract has covered it. As if you have eyes, but the cataracts cover. It's the same. So when you even use the hearing power, the true hearing organ, then even your eyes will be also uh, bright. It will return to uh, normal again, okay? Yeah. As if, as if your eyes return to normal, because it free the eyes also. I mean the real seeing nature. So the dust gives way to pure and perfect insight. 
uh, in sight. When purity is ultimate, the light is penetrating. A stillness shines and includes within it all of emptiness. I mean, the whole universe, you can, you can know it. You see, when everything's still through the meditation of the real sound, the real vibration, then you encompass the whole universe then. The whole empty, emptiness is the whole universe because from emptiness, the whole universe sprung out. Remember that? Yeah. Looking at the world from this point of view, now your cataract is gone. <laughs> you look with this point of view. Everything that happens is just like a dream. Truly like that. I really try to forget very hard this realization in order to sit with you, talk to you, and teaching people. Because if I always remember my realization, this is all illusion, I don't want to do anything anymore. I feel it's a waste of time doing anything. But you still don't know that. I mean, many of you, the world don't know that. So I just have to blind myself, stuff my ears in order to do what I am doing now. Mm. Really, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's hard for me, yeah? To close myself, lock myself in this physical body to be one of you. Sometimes very hard, yes. Sometimes uh, <laughs> I could cry. I could cry. Like you are a free person again. You have to go back in prison for no reason. Locked in there, yeah? Mm. What? Oh, they're thanking me. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, okay. No, no. It's, of course, it's a pleasure at the same time, knowing that I can do something, not just crying over you or for you, but can do something to help you to awaken yourself. It's just hard to blind yourself and walk <laughs> when you have your perfect eyes. Okay? Yes. He continued to say, everything after your ears are cultivated, return to original source, then your eyes, I mean your eyes, your real eyes is open again, clear again. You see from this point of view, everything is illusion. Everything is illusionary. Everything is, is a dream. And he continued. Matanchi's daughter, the one who seduced him, Matanchi's daughter too is part of the dream. Who was able then to physically detain you? If he was thus enlightened, as if his eyes are open again, his ears are usable again, then he would see Mandaji, Matanji's daughter, the beautiful artisan, just a part of the dream only. How can a part of a dream even physically detain you in her room? I guess after Ananda fell into her trap, because she recited they are magical family and she recited the highest possible most powerful mantra that's called Brahma Heavens mantra okay nothing can resist therefore Ananda so determined to be a monk and so worshipping the Buddha and loving the Buddha and loving monk's light fell I guess after that the Buddha feel that it's time to impart it to him, the Kuan Yin method, to protect him. Because if you practice this Kuan Yin method to the full, yeah, then even Matanji's daughter, you will see it as just illusionary figure or dreamlike, so you will not be charmed by any mantra, even the most powerful one. You will counteract with that, yeah, and no problem, you will be free. That's what he meant. So that's why the Buddha determined to want Ananda to be enlightened through Kuan Yin Method. But before that, he's very democratic. Why does he have to explain so many methods, ask everybody's opinion before he tell him to learn Kuan Yin Method? He's a Buddha, he could just say, Anand, now. Learn it. 
Why did he have to sell so many long calendars? <laughs> yeah, and make me talk for five hours. <laughs> <laughs> the point is, Ananda is extremely intellectual. Okay, he knows too much. Theory. By following the Buddha, hearing too much, his, his, his head is so full. If you don't give him any good, logical, solid ground reason to study this method, why this and not others, when we spoil with choice, then he won't take it. He might sit there, listen, but then he says, so what? I like the other one better. Ananda has much ego. Even though Buddha don't say that, he knows his disciple. <laughs> so even many, some uh, follow me with cunning method, they're still going out trying something else and then coming back crying. For what? <laughs> okay, I let you go. Doesn't matter, okay? It's trying this, trying that. Because didn't feel like why you should practice this method because not resolved enough, not have enough determination to follow on, not determined to, to trust Master as the best method for you, even though I said so, you see? But I can't sit many hours, many days to talk to one by one, a lot of calendars, must be this. I cannot keep explaining all kind of yogas for you, yeah? So that you believe and practice. So I just do what I can, okay? And you believe what you do. Mm. There's nothing much I can do more. There's a limit of time, space. Like when I go lecture, we have only uh, maybe four hours the rent in that place. And otherwise, next one is somebody else, you see? And it's difficult to just rent any place sometimes. They don't have space available, okay? And my time, I have to go to another country next, etc., etc., huh? And then when you come here, I cannot always talk about different methods. There were thousands of them. It's just confusing you more. So I do what I can. I tell you what I can. I say I have tried many methods. This is the best. But it's up to you to trust me or not trust me. huh? I can accept you. But you accept what I said or not is a different thing. Yeah? I cannot force you. I cannot use a magic power to change your mind or alter your thinking, or control your thought. I don't do that. I don't do this kind of stuff. Some people say, oh, Master, please change my mind. Make me more uh, peaceful, make me more beautiful, make me more thinking positive. I don't do that. I can't. You are an individual hmm, with God inside. I don't want to change God. I don't want to control God. You have to find yourself, the real God inside. By controlling anything else, which is a God, okay? And you find the God. And then you know what it is, okay? If I can <laughs> control all of your minds, it would be easy. <sighs> no need doing anything. Sit in my room and search. <laughs> Send all this controlling power to all directions. All the leaders are under my thumbs. <laughs> All the warring Mongols are subdued. Understand? <laughs> uh, no good, right? You are born here to experience what you have to experience. And you have to learn by all your own will, power, and intelligence. I cannot disrespect you, uh, disregard your intelligence, and treat you like a dum-dum and, you know, twisting you around my finger. That is not right, okay? It's not right. If you choose to roll in, in the dust life after life again and again, then it is your choice. Huh? You have the right to choose. So I just explain to you, I just talk to you, reason to you, and then you choose, okay? And you choose to practice harder or slower, it's also your choice, even after initiation. I don't control anything, but you better practice quick, <laughs> okay? Go quick, <laughs> even if I don't control, even if I don't force you. You do it for your own sake, and your five, six, ten generations, and the whole world at large. <laughs> Good. All right, he continued, yeah? So he said, if you are enlightened through 
the Kuan Yin. But if you truly, truly devote it and get full enlightenment through Kuan Yin, then you see everything like a dream. So no one can even touch you. No one can detain you, can seduce you. That's what you mean, okay? So he continued. It is like a puppeteer who plays with shadows and works the dolls to seem as real as people. You know these uh, puppeteer show? Yeah. We have it in every country. Yeah. In Taiwan, we have them too. You know, the puppet show before, we have no movies, no video. So they play puppeteer. And not always easy to get the real actors and actresses to always learn the script and play live. So they use puppeteer in between or in different places. Because there are real good actors and actresses are hard to find anywhere. Not to talk about if they're willing to be actors and actresses even. Not everybody wants to be in the theater business, no? So... Uh, there's only certain extent of the people who plays. Before, we don't have any prompter. They have to learn by heart the whole drama. Imagine that. Mm. And then there's not so many actors, you see? And in every region, they have also some actors, yeah? Sometimes they have to go to another region to play. Cannot go the whole country, the whole continent long, no? Nah? Because in the old time, the, the transportation is not as good as now, okay? No. Therefore, they use a puppet, no? This since ancient time already, we use all that. Every country has them, yes. And some, they make it so good. If you can see it up close, <laughs> normally puppeteers are playing just for a small audience, not so large audience, because from far you see nothing. <laughs> the puppets are only small. They cannot make puppets just like real big, then, then they cannot carry around. <laughs> but I don't know, they could make big people, right? Are there strings? Oh, is that very strong string, right? strong heart muscle? Oh, okay, I understand now. So, and works the dolls the same as real as people. Although one sees them move about freely, they are really governed by a set of strings. A set of strings, yeah. Cease operating the control of the strings, then they return to stillness. The entire illusion is without a nature. It's like that, just like the puppet show. The six sense organs are also thus. At first, there was one essential brightness, which split into a six-fold combination. But if one part ceases and returns, all six functions will stop as well. In response to a thought, defiling objects vanish, becoming pure and wonderful, perfect brightness. If one the organs cease to function outwardly, then all the other organs also became purified and respond the same to one pure thought, yeah? So everything else, defiling, illusion, all disappear. Mm. Only perfect, wonderful brightness will reveal, yeah? Just like when you are in meditation, you see only light, nothing else, okay? If there is residual defilement, one must still study. I mean, must continue to meditate, yeah? It's not like you are initiated into Kuan Yin Method and all the defilement, all the impurity will leave you. You have to continue. If something not pure still exists, yeah? Then, you see, you have to continue study. You must still study, meaning continue to practice yeah, diligently. When the brightness is ultimate, that is the Tathagata. When you reach complete brightness within yourself, any time, the light shines all the time, through the hearing or through the light meditation, then you found your true Buddha nature. The Tathagata, that's mean Buddha, okay? Then you found your Buddha. Ananda, and everyone in this great assembly, turn yourselves around and revert the hearing. Return the hearing and listen to the self-nature till the nature reaches the supreme way. 
You do that until you attain the supreme way. That is what perfect penetration really means. It is the gateway enter. He means the Quan Yin method is the gateway for you to come inside, to enter. They just say enter, meaning you go inward instead. To enter the Buddhahood, to enter the true nature. Yeah? Okay. By Buddhas, as many as dust modes, this is a gateway that all the Buddhas use to enter. Yeah. It is the one path to Nirvana. One path. Wow. Not even there are other paths to enter Nirvana, but one path to enter Nirvana. Are you lucky guys? Yeah. Mm. Thus come ones of the past perfected this method. Bodhisattvas now merge with this total brightness. People of the future who study and practice this method will also rely on this Dharma. Through this method, I too have been certified. Manchusri. Kuan Xuying Bodhisattva was not alone in using it. Yeah. No wonder he's so wise. Huh? Kuan Yin Bodhisattva powerful. This guy is so wise. <laughs> Both because of the... What? Kuan Yin. Good. <laughs> Kuan Yin method. <laughs> I just uh, tried to see if you have listened. <laughs> Good, you did. As the Buddha, the world honored one, requested, I choose sincerely a skill in means, means skillful means, yeah? One skillful means to save those in the final end who seek to escape the mundane world and perfect the heart of nirvana, mean going to be Buddha. The best way is to contemplate the sounds Okay? Meditating on the sound. The sound of the universe. Yeah, they say the sound of the world, but I mean, they don't understand. <laughs> uh, at that time, they don't say the universe, I guess, because they didn't know anything about the universe. The sound of the world is saying like that, okay? The vibration that we are listening every day, yeah? All the other kinds of experience require the awesome spirit of the Buddha blessing. The Buddha blessing, otherwise not because of the touch, not because of the taste that I get enlightened. The Buddha, their master, bless them at that time. In some cases, they bring immediate transcendence. Yes. But they are not the customary means of practice. Spoken for those of shallow and deep roots alike. He said, other convenient methods are good only because the Buddha's blessing at that time, the Master blessing. And because of that, it can bring you immediate enlightenment of some sort. Uh, remember, I think it's, it's in Yogananda book or something, one disciple went to the mountain and this and that and source to look for <laughs> enlightened sensation and then came back. The Master just touched him in the chest and immediately he saw light and everything else. And the master say mountains, rivers cannot give you enlightenment. <laughs> but he let the disciple go to look for it before until he cannot find much and he came back. Not just mountains and rivers, but he seek those uh, hermit, other master who was hiding somewhere in the mountains and somewhere near the river to practice. Yeah, he, he thinking maybe his master is useless, <laughs> no good, because he don't find anything while staying with his master for a long time. Maybe he looked in the wrong direction, just like Ananda, huh? staying next to Buddha every day thinking he's some big shot, but he's not. <laughs> so uh, he fell to the trap of a beautiful woman. Then he feel a little more humble. <laughs> Maybe she is there for that purpose. You see what I mean? Everything is good for some purpose. Yes. She was waiting there for him to cut his ego. <laughs> 
And afterwards he become more humble, therefore he can listen to all this. Otherwise, maybe he just doesn't feel like, yeah, I know everything already. I listened to Buddha for years. What can you even tell me? My master, the Buddha, I'm with him day in, day out, next to him. But his intellect block him from receiving even Buddha blessing. His arrogance lock him inside his ego. So he cannot even get the blessing from Buddha. Uh, lucky the Buddha sent somebody come rescue him or else he would stay there with the woman and after a while some little Ananda were born and then little Man- Matanji born and then he will be forever lost. At least for that lifetime. So actually she's good for him. Nah? After that She also follow the Buddha, become a nun, and compete with Ananda, see who <laughs> is better, <laughs> who is faster <laughs> in the path of enlightenment. <laughs> so the Buddha blessing, the real master, blessing power, can bring you immediately awakening. Yeah? Some, some of you also have experience like that. And uh, some chalas from other masters also experience that. Okay. So the living master house awesome power inside. Yeah, that's why they seek a living master, not scripture. Yeah, and depends on what you seek. If you seek just to uh, have some <laughs> exercise, some s- a small spark of light or visionary or anything, just to pass time, or depends on how yearning you are to go home. Then you meet. What kind of master? Hmm? Okay? Don't blame any master if they don't teach you Kuan Yin method or don't lead you to the fifth level or complete uh, enlightenment or liberation. And blame yourself. Yes, you don't search hard enough. You don't really long, fervently, sincerely enough to go home. All right? Okay. The blessing of the master with all this experience method, even sometimes it bring immediate transcendental experience, but it's not the normal means of practice. Even spoken for those of shallow and deep roots alike, even for those who are already been practicing many lifetimes, or some beginners alike, uh, these experience methods are not suitable, not for everyone. Even with the one with deep, enlightening, uh, yearning root already within them, with deep practicing since many lifetimes already, even for them, is still not suitable without the Buddha's blessing. <laughs> even with the Buddha blessing, see, Ananda didn't get anything. <laughs> uh, the two medicine men immediately get enlightening. Uh, experience. Uh, the uh, other monks just hear Buddha's voice and then get enlightening. Ananda has been with him, hear his voice every day for years, get nothing. Ananda has been with Buddha for a long time, get nothing. That's why Buddha wants him to be enlightened, to protect him from another seduction somewhere again because he was very good looking. Yeah. I read somewhere that Buddha forbid him to let his uh, shoulder exposed. Normally, the monk at that time, they have only a blanket, they cover like that, and one shoulder exposed. And when they want to talk to the Buddha, they also expose one shoulder to show respect, custom. Even then, Buddha forbid Ananda <laughs> to expose anything, <laughs> even just a shoulder. How can you feel enticed, <laughs> seduced by a man's shoulder? That I don't understand. But the Buddha must know. He has 500. Uh, <laughs> beautiful woman with him. But the Buddha doesn't know. He was a prince and all his concubines. He don't even need to expose even his nose. They all run after him already. <laughs> Because his surname is Prince and Crown Prince even. And everybody won that position. Wife of the Crown Prince. So he doesn't need to even expose shoulder, even a nose, he don't need. Ear also don't need. He cover from head to toe, they still run for him. Now maybe he knows all that. Maybe Ananda is exceptionally handsome. Mm. A shoulder even cannot be exposed. <laughs> And even then, the, the Matanchi daughter still run for him, yeah? 
practice this mantra just for him, just to seduce him. The best, the most powerful one that no man can escape. <laughs> if you want to get a man, this is a very low quality, low dignity method. If you have to resource to a mantra to charm a man, then oh, I would feel very embarrassed, yeah? shame, guilty. Even if you get him, you will never feel you are love it. Even if he show all the love to you, you would think, oh, it's a special effect. <laughs> <laughs> Left over power from the mantra. You know he didn't love you. You, you chase him, you trap him, you tricked him. In your heart you never feel satisfied yeah, as a beloved woman. Yeah. So useless, yeah? But this is the thing. This is a drama that unfolds is it, for the Buddha and uh, his uh, monk, yeah? So that Ananda become more enlightened, more careful and more humble. And so that this beautiful woman also can become enlightened. She became a heart, no? After, yeah? Mm. So they both have something. <laughs> something uh, with each other to give and take, to pay and to do something, you know, play this drama. So, Manjushri continue speaking. I bow to the ones, the thirst come one. Here he say, ones come thirst. It's the same, yeah. And the Tripitaka, the holy three. And to those inconceivable ones with no outflows, or the saints and sages with no more defects. Trusting they will aid those in the future, so that no one will doubt this Dharma door. No one will doubt this method. It is an expedient easy to master. Is it easy for you or not easy? Yes. Quanning method easy or not? Yes or no? Yes. An appropriate teaching for Ananda as well. Mm -hmm. It's easy to master for Ananda also. And for those immersed in the final age, I mean after the Buddha Nirvana, of, they, he say 500 years ago, his Dharma ending age, for his Dharma age, yeah. They should cultivate this organ of hearing, but actually also in our time, you know, some years of our time since we were born until recent years, they call it Kali Yuga, means the Dharma ending age. Actually, also, not just the Buddha's Dharma ending, but Kali Yuga age, mean Dharma ending age, yeah? So we are lucky still have method to practice. We have to thank all the saints, the saints that protect and preserve the lineage of Kuan Yin method up to date. We really are grateful. Because the the lineage don't always run in one direction or in one place. Like the river, you know, it runs under somewhere and then it emerges somewhere else and then it hidden again underground, depends, yeah? And then it come out again, yeah? So if we sometimes keep looking in the same tradition, we might miss the mark. I'm glad you did not miss the mark. I'm glad you are wise enough to look wide and far. <laughs> Uh, he said that for those immersed in the final age, they should cultivate this organ of hearing, you know, I mean the true hearing, a perfect penetration that surpasses all others. It is the way to the true body. The true mind is a true mind, but I'm worried you mess up with your mind, so I say the true body, yeah, true mind. The true mind means the true self, huh? the true enlightening, the true thinking, the really true wisdom of all. Thereupon, Ananda and all in the great assembly experience a clarity of body and mind. Having attained such profound instruction, they contemplated the Buddha's body and Parinivana like someone who, having traveled far on business, knows that he is on the road home, though he has not returned completely. 
throughout the entire assembly, the god, dragons, and all the eightfold division, all different kind of divas and demons and human beings, those of the two vehicles who were not yet beyond learning, as well as all the bodhisattvas of initial resolve, as numerous as the sands in the ten Ganges rivers. You must know there are invisible bodhisattva and beings as well. That's why it is as numerous as the sands in the ten Ganges river. It's not like the Buddha ashram can contain all this physical <laughs> bodhisattva, okay? Because his ashram, I think, it cannot be bigger than mine here, okay? found their fundamental mind and far removed from dust and defilement attained the purity of the Dharma eye. Probably they, at that time everyone see the light then. Huh? See the light now. Huh? The bhikshuni named nature attained a hardship after hearing this verse. Only hearing that she attained a hardship. And limitless being brought forth a matchless, unequaled, resolved for Anuttara Samyak Sambuddhi, meaning want to become enlightened as Buddha. Yeah. Ananda straightened his robe and then bowed in the midst of the assembly and placed his palms together. The tracks of his mind were perfectly clear, and he felt a mixture of joy and sorrow. His intent was to benefit beings in the future as he made obeisance and said to the Buddha, Greatly compassionate, world-honored one, I have already awakened and received this teaching for becoming a Buddha, I mean Guan Yin Method just now, and I can cultivate it without the slightest doubt. I have often heard the first come one say, Save others first, then save yourself. That is the aspiration of a bodhisattva. Once your own enlightenment is perfect, then you can enlighten others. That is the way the thirst come one responds to the world. Although I am not yet saved, I vow to save all living beings in the Dharma and in age, etc. And then he asked the Buddha how, we see last time, were well, honor one, those living beings will gradually drift away from the Buddha and there will be as many deviant teachers propounding their methods as there are sands in the Ganges. I want to enable those beings to collect their thoughts and enter Samadhi. How can I cause them to reside peacefully in Bodhimanda, far from the exploit of demons and be irreversible in their resolve for Bodhi? Okay? And then the Buddha say, you know, the Buddha will tell us how to uh, be uh, pure, remember? The five precepts from then on, yeah? Last time we read already, yeah? I'm not sure if I read all that. Yeah, he did, no? He said, at that time, the world honor one praised Ananda in front of the whole assembly, saying, good indeed, how good it is that you have asked how to establish Bodhimanda and to rescue and protect living beings who are sunk in the morass of the final age. Listen well now and I will tell you. And then I read all that, remember? You have to cut away lust and killing thought and all that? Yeah, we read that already, huh? Yeah, so okay then. Up until uh, Bishu who do not wear silk, who do not wear leather boots, furs or down, etc., and not consume milk, cream, or butter, yeah, can truly transcend this world. But must practice also running method. That's what he means. Because it's better that way. Because Ananda, you see, even though he became a monk already, he didn't wear silk, he didn't wear leather boots. For sure, if the Buddha already uh, instructed this rule in the ashram, he wouldn't wear it. But he still wasn't enlightened. Buddha need to teach him Guaning method. And all the other Bishuni and Bishu also need to learn Guaning method. So Guaning method is awesome. Good, huh? Yes. Okay, thank you. But you remember the Buddha also taught us that to make a body manda, I mean the, uh, a pure place for contemplation, you have to sit 100 days without eating, without sleeping, without drinking even. 
maybe you can accomplish that, okay, with a firm faith in the Buddha and with a pure master who transmitted to you this pure method, okay, or helping with the bodhimanda in purity. Otherwise, he say it's useless. And recite this endless mantra that I skip. I did not read it to you because it's translated from Sanskrit, phonetized from Sanskrit. So I wasn't sure whether or not it's useful. It could be useful, but I don't know if you have time to read it. <laughs> All right, today our calendar ends here. Maybe see you next time. Yeah. We should really thank the past masters, monks and nuns and scholars who have taken time to record the Buddha's teaching after the masters and Nirvana. And also for the past and present persons, lay or monks and nuns who have really dedicated themselves, sacrificed their time and precious health or under any difficult situation to translate this so that I can read it to you. And we have to thank them. And may they be blessed forever by all the Buddhas, past, present, and future. May their merit be immense. May they be liberated forever. Thank you. Ciao! Beautiful people. I like it also. It helps when when I speak with the assembly who are more enlightened. So we are more in the same frequency. There's no rubbing anywhere, no friction. But I love you all no matter what, okay?